Hello. So just a quick warning, my hair is going to look terrible today because it's humid outside and yeah, do you see the curls, the yuckiness? Although, aside from that, if you just zoom in really close to my face, my face looks pretty awesome, doesn't it? So, soon your heavenly fire is out and I'm not getting it yet, mainly because Laura slept in. And it's really funny because last night we were texting. We were figuring out what's, what was going to go on this morning. And I was reading Storm of Swords, of course. And so I was like, come on, let's get going, let's get going. But I talked to Laura and I was like, do you want me to wake you up in case you sleep in? You know, like call you to make sure you get up? No, I would never do that. I'm not stupid, okay? I turned on my Wi-Fi for two seconds to check and make sure I don't have any messages from that woman as I'm sitting out here in my garage waiting for her to pick me up. And of course, it happened. I slept in, be there at nine, which is 15 minutes late, but that's okay. Told you so. We just lost 15 minutes to read. The good news is I did finish Storm of Swords yesterday. It was a miracle of God. He must have really wanted me to finish that because I woke up yesterday morning with 400 pages left in the book and I was like, I can hardly read 100 in a day. How is this going to happen? And then I went to the beach and it all worked out. I'm, I'm vlogging so that I don't feel terribly depressed that Laura's not here yet. We're going to go and get it and yeah. Can't remember if I read Breaking Dawn in a day the day it came out. I know it took me a long time to read Goblet of Fire. It's probably going to be closer to Goblet of Fire because Cassandra Clare writing it takes longer for me to get into, to be honest. So, I'm not wearing black or ruins or anything. I thought about it. Trust me, I did. But I have one black shirt and you know what it is. <laughs> and I just figured, hey, why not not wear it? Like, I don't know. I should stop talking. I'm running off of like seven hours of sleep. <laughs> I know that sounds like a lot, but it's not. Especially when I went to bed at like 12.30. I know that's not late, but it is for me. So I'll see you guys on the other side when Laura's around. And yeah, get excited. Ah, uh, okay, I'm done. I like it, Matt, because they're so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm sorry, my heart's like racing. It's so cute. You just, you're so. I really want to kiss you, Matt. You said abruptly and then shook his head. See, this is why I haven't been willing to see you. But they're so cute together. And I'm really happy. I have a bunch of notes um, in a notebook and we have thoughts about things that I'm going to talk about later when we get to the checkpoint, which is close to page 100, page 98, which is where. Chapter 4 starts. So I will be back to check in with you at chapter 4 talking about my notes and about humor and squealing with Jenna but for now Magnus and Alec I'm sorry it's just so beautiful. Oh, Laura already came in here for this scene but ah oh, feels feels feels. I knew a girl once immortal like me. Feels. Tessa. Feels. Oh, they're being so stupid. And the other half of it is they keep making a big deal about Magnus and all his secrets and I just want to know everything. I don't like, I don't like the people from the new series. I just don't like them, okay? Except for Mark. Mark sounds really awesome and he's not here anymore and <sighs> I'm not a fan of Emma Carstairs. So I'm just gonna say that. I have a long way to go. There's just so many sissy feels. And like, oh, I really like this chapter because there was like, there were Malik and Sissy. And they were all good, except not really, because Magnus sucks. But I just picture the part where it's like, does this mean we're dating? Like he yells that after her and she's smiling and she's like, I, I don't know, aren't we? And then he's just like, yeah, yeah, you have to do Basically, Isabel just said she loved him, but she didn't. I'm so excited. I have reached chapter four before Jenna. And she came running in here twice to talk, which is probably why I got here first. So I'm at her first checkpoint, page 100-ish getting a chapter four. So I figured I would just talk about some of the stuff that I wrote down in my notebook because I wanted to talk about it with Jenna, but it's hard when we're not at the same page. So at least now you guys can read it with us. It's kind of weird that all the protagonists of her books are gonna meet each other 
because how Emma is meeting Clary right now and then Clary's gonna meet Tessa and I guess it makes sense though that Emma is little in this book so that she can grow up and be in love with Julian in like 2013, 2014-ish, whatever because if those books are coming out later then it makes sense for I don't know for that time to pass so I guess that makes sense but it's just kind of annoying because I don't know I feel like some authors just don't really know how to write little kids and Emma just seems really pretentious and annoying but I wrote these idiotic female protagonists. I'm sorry, but Tessa, Clary, and Emma. Well, I'll just stay here and watch and then get in trouble because I'm gonna watch the scene, but they're gonna notice me eventually and then I have to take part in it. Like, it always happens. Sebastian gets stabbed in the heart because... Ouch. I do think that Cassie Clare did a better job of making the beginning funny because I feel like a lot of times some of her humor is just not funny and it's just trying to be funny. It's like me when I try to write and be funny and it's like effort to be funny instead of just being funny. But I was laughing out loud at a lot of these lines in the first three chapters. So I really appreciate that, Katsy Claire. You actually, you made it funny. You made it good for me having not read the books for a year to figure out what was happening, to remember things like being a daylighter. You broke my phone. And I really wanted someone to say, you broke my brush. I definitely have been liking Alec more in the first three chapters and obviously I'm only on graffiti then but that's my thoughts. I liked it when Magnus called Clary a biscuit. I just giggled out loud. I just wrote Brother Z. Yes! She was doing something with her hands, unfastening her cloak, he thought for a moment, but surely Isabel wasn't about to start taking her clothes off in front of her entire family. Jen's still reading. I don't know what it's worth because I'm 19 years old and I don't have any published books. I'm not famous but as an English major We've been told not to use the passive voice and so many things in these novels are the passive voice and it's killing me. I understand using the passive voice if you are interrupting something. Like I'm Clary, I walk into a room and things are happening or things had been happening. Jace was writing in this book. Alec was sharpening this knife. Okay, that makes sense. But when things are currently happening and we're saying was something in, it just, it's that one step removed from the action but then again, Jenna always says, I read like a writer and she reads like a reader. So I guess it's good to have those two thoughts with us because I'm always thinking about plot, character introduction, things like that. Things about if I were writing this, what would I be doing? And Jenna's thinking about it from more of a booktuber standpoint. So I guess you can have my opinion for this. So we're done up to chapter four. Basically, the beginning. Ugh. Cassandra Clare books are always rough at the beginning and finales make it ten times harder because it just does for some reason. And the other half of it is I'm still kind of stuck in Game of Thrones mode so I just, with that prologue though, I was so excited for the new series coming out next year and I'm sure I will be by the end of this book but uh, I don't like them. Emma kind of annoys me and she's too boy crazy. The only one that I kind of like is Mark and he's not even in the book at the moment and Yes. The beginning scenes with Emma where she had these moments, she just kept being boy crazy and she was like, oh my gosh, look at his face. It's so wonderfully shaped and he looks so beautiful like a fairy, but I'm not supposed to like him, but I like him. He's so attractive. Emma, stop staring at him. I'm not staring. What are you talking? She, you're 12. Like when I was 12, the only thing I cared about were stuffed animals and maybe Hannah Montana. Really though, was that necessary? I mean, obviously she's setting up for the storyline between Julian and Emma, but still it annoyed me because she's like 12. Okay, just stop. So bad job. I just, uh, I don't, I don't know with that guy. So much good humor. I laughed. Laura was laughing out loud while we were together at one of the best lines was sarcastic applause. If anybody could make sarcastic applause, the people in the TMI books could. Magnus feels like I just love that guy so much. I already got spoiled, okay? Well, not really. But I was like flipping through the book because I was waiting for Laura to finish and I was like, okay, what is there? Somebody has to give up their immortality and Simon was suggesting giving up his and I just can't even right now. Who's gonna give up the immortality? What's going on? I thought Cassie Claire did a better job of actually being funny. I don't know why. It was like everything, everything hit the mark. Yeah, it wasn't just trying to be funny. Yeah, and then she not. does try a lot and sometimes it does fall. You were laughing a lot. I know. Like every two it seconds, was, I was at like a serious part, and I'd be like, "Okay, gotta focus on Emma Carr stares and all of them." Except not like that. You don't laugh like that. You like you. How do you laugh? 
<laughs> That's how I laugh. I don't. I can't even do it. But when I was listening, you had a very specific laugh. Well, I snored a lot when I read Yeah, that that's too. probably what it was. Magnus always oh, ending up with shadow hunters running into his house and he can't do anything. <laughs> he like doesn't even try to He's just like, okay, what do you have to say to me? Just say it. Just go for it. I don't care. It's like three of your friends have been here already. <laughs> oh, I love her. Oh, she's my sister. Why? 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 Oh my gosh, that was like, I, I, I almost highlighted that and I was like, that is pretty much the first like two to three books in one sentence. Oh my gosh, for real. One sentence. When he goes, I'm gonna go see Maya, and I went, oh. Actually, we were reading. I was ahead of you for the first time the entire time. I got past chapter one by like a page, and then all of a sudden I heard you go, ah, and obviously you got to the part where Jordan was there. And then I realized she was ahead of me, and then I was like, wow, I need to read faster. And then she got ahead of me. We're like 14% It seems really pretty though. straightforward that they're just gonna go battle Sebastian, and yet... They have to get stuck in the deep They have 600 more How pages. is that gonna happen? How do they... How does one... It's been like two hours, and we're only 100 pages. We're so not good. It's gonna be like 3 a.m. when we finish. I remember last year, I was reading these, and I shipped Clace like everybody does, because it's Clace. You gotta love Clace. But, for some reason, I just... I'm not having them right now, like... Jace just cornered Clary with his hands against the wall, you know, and they were like kissing and it just... Uh, I don't know, I... It just doesn't sound fun, okay? And Jace doesn't sound that great and... I don't know! The most unrealistic part of this series is not the fictional world, the fantasy, all that. It's literally... Clary and Jason's relationship, like, I want to fling them against the wall. Come run inside, because Jordan died. Now, I feel bad for being happy that he's dead, because I shouldn't be happy when someone who's good dies, and he's a nice guy, and I don't want Simon to be sad that he's dead, because they were roommates and they were friends, but <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I just like, Oh no, Jordan, oh no, I'm so, I have to tell you something I don't know how to tell you. And then Sebastian just like jams the sword through his chest and is like, your boyfriend's dead. Sebastian, this Yili coin, like, come on. She like stands up in her room all naked and she's just like, yeah, we suck, so we're sleeping together. Guess who was right? Jordan just died. But I did kind of predict that. Also, Sebastian and the Sealy Queen. What? Um, it makes a lot of sense. They're both really evil. And, oh my goodness. I have another theory. Okay, so Clary just got handed the Morgan Stern short sword from Diana at this weapon shop. And I'm pretty sure that sword is the sword on the cover. And so I'm guessing, I don't know. I think she could kill him with that sword. Sebastian stabs Jace in the shoulder, just like we saw in the illustration. Except for then his shoulder is on fire, and then Sebastian's burned, and then all of a sudden the Iron Sisters are just like, hey, we showed up because his shoulder's on fire, and then Jace is kind of like in and out, like not able to do anything, and then they're like, Sebastian, this is bad. And he goes, okay. So he like stabs the ground and jumps into it. Like, what? It's cool that I can see the pictures that I've understood, like going through everything could kind of understand the pictures and see them coming into play. I just had this brilliant revelation and I really hope that it's right. Clary's saying, I'm a Morgan Stern, there's no way to get around it. And she says, I'm not afraid, that's just something that you made up. And she says, no, actually, I mean, I meant something because when we did your ceremony, normally have an iron sister and a silent brother, but because we were in hiding, we couldn't do that. So we had Brother Zechariah and a female warlock. Like, what other female warlocks do we know, okay? And her name was Tessa Gray. And I don't know if she put F for like Fairchild and then Gray, you know, F, like F, Clary, F, Gray. But like, she probably named her after Tessa, and so Tessa probably knew her when she was born. And that's gonna make so much sense when they get to see each other. Like, I just started the part where Jace goes to see Brother Zechariah. And I just started it, so I'm really excited. So I think I'm just gonna sit here and read and make some remarks because I'm so excited. I just love Jem so much, so much. I love him so much more than literally any other character. Magnus is probably my second. Okay, Jem is my favorite. 
Chase Herondale, said the boy. Once more, a Herondale is the bringer of my deliverance. I should have anticipated. Why is he not a brother anymore? The heavenly fire burned away the darkness and gems of light. Oh my gosh. So finally a Herondale saved him. His dark hair and pale skin looked like a photo negative of Jace. <laughs> My very bad type. I love like few ever could love with all and everything. I see you are like that too. It's not even that sad. I'm only 31% through. Why can't you go somewhere else to do these horrible things? My